Today, we have a very special guest on the Swim Swam podcast. We have a man with three decades of experience as a sports business executive across the United States and the United Kingdom for organizations like Major League Soccer, English Premier League, National Basketball Association, and the National Hockey League. Today, we have the president and CEO of USA Swimming, Tim Hinchy. You're supposed to do a cheer, Tim. Oh, thank you. I, I appreciate you coming on and uh, coming on. And I know we don't have a whole lot of time, so there's a, there's a lot to unpack here. I have an ulterior motive for for bringing you on. I, I it's my hope that everyone, it's my hope that everybody can get to know you the way I've gotten to know you. And um, but it sounds like you're ahead of this curve. USAswimming.org just went live on a quarterly series that you're pinning, and this is this is CEO Corner. Just you know, what's what is what's the what's the concept behind CEO Corner and and what you're doing? And folks, if you're out there listening, press pause, go to USAswimming.org and 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 search for CEO Corner, and you can read it now. Well, it, it is today's the first day. I'll, I'll be honest. I'm going to give this uh, to our managing director of communications, Bell McLemore. This is her brainchild. Uh, but the reality, one of our objectives, I think, uh, since I got here, was really to be as transparent as possible, as possible in everything that we do. And I think, I think the core, the key to anything, I think, from a youth serving membership organization and everything we're doing is, is increased communication, uh, right? And transparency, communication, engagement, et cetera. And I think this is an opportunity specifically after each board meeting. We had a board meeting last Friday, uh, which is important. So hopefully to kind of illustrate some of the top things that we're working on collaboratively between the board and our chairman, Bob Vincent, that entire 15 member board, which are, is a dynamic and diverse group of individuals from coaches and athletes and uh, officials to semi independents and talk about what really what we're working on strategically and with my strategy team, which, which is what we call our leadership team at USA Swimming. So hopefully it'll be informative. It'll be a chance for people to kind of see what we're up to from a strategic level. It's, um, Folks, if you're listening, you, you've got to you've got to drop in. You've got to press pause. You've got to go read it. Um, it. It covers a lot of topics. One, keeping athletes first. Two, digital transformation. And three, world class event. We'll unpack that later in the podcast. But I'd just like to say this. I just want to ask one one important question: Did you swim today? Yes, sir. We did. Uh, got a little three thousand meters in outdoors and sixteen degrees. It was great. This is this is what I know about Tim. If you're if you're a part of the team, he he he. It's not a requirement, but it is encouraged. So it's, it's a it is an aquatic oh. organization, and he likes people swimming. I have done a few workouts with Tim. I heard that he was pretty intense. Well, and Shana Ferguson, your chief commercial officer, gave me a tip. She said, "Mel, if you want to keep up with him, wear fins." And I thought she was kidding. And I was going five seconds behind you and I wore fins and my goal was to try and, and, and touch the wall before you finished each repeat. So you're, you're back in the water in a serious way. Uh, I love it. Right. And I think, you know, it's amazing to sit here today and think that uh, one of my most important passions beyond my family and my children uh, is swimming and for me to be able to work in it and dedicate myself to it every day is a dream come true. Yeah. It's a, uh, that's a, that's a little different. You know, our first, when, when USA Swimming broke off from um, the AAU back in 1979, our, our first executive director wasn't CEO, was Ray Essek. And Ray Essek was a coach. A lot of people didn't like him, but I, I mean, looking back on it, I think that he did a lot, start, you know, really launching USA Swimming. And he evolved slowly over time. Then we had Chuck Wilgus, and Chuck was, was outside and he wasn't a swimmer. And so this is, it, it seems as though since you've, you've come in, you have, you've done two things. You've, you've, you've chlorinated the staff and, um, but this, they're chlorinated. However, they, they're also coming with great resumes and you, you have remade the staff. And a lot of people say, you know, USC swimming has been under the gun with safe sport and there needs to be changes. And when I tell peers and when I tell people who were from the outside looking in is that that's happened, we have a new board. Uh, and Tim Henshaw, our CEO, has has remolded the staff. Could you explain that a little bit? Just kind of give us an idea of, of what you did. 
I, absolutely. I think that, you know, when I got here, my, my first charge, and I told the old board in particular, Jim Sheehan, who I had a tremendous debt of gratitude for, for not only hiring me, but certainly he was the one that also led our current governance change at the board level, which I think has been incredible. So I, I think for me, it was about listening. I went on a, what I call kind of a 100-day listening tour, got out to several different events, uh, talked to some key stakeholders within the sport, uh, people that led organizations that worked with us, to coaches on deck, and obviously very fortunate that I even worked for a few like Dave Salo, who hired me years and years ago to coach for him. So it was great to re-engage with the sport, and I did that. But one of the things I noticed at the staff, at the staff level anyway, was great staff from a phenomenal team that uh, has been there for a long time. It was a very, it was a very flat and linear type of organization, and I felt like for us to be strategic, I, I, I kind of felt like we need to have distinct business units that are accountable to specific KPIs and key performance indicators that will drive and, and collaborate with our board vision. And in order to do that, I, I saw an opportunity where we could bring in some new talent. And it's it's certainly nothing against folks that have been lifetime phenomenal uh, contributors to swimming at any level, volunteer, employee, or whatever. But I think at the same time, it's an opportunity to bring in fresh eyes and, and bring in some subject matter experts and bring some professionals in from other sports. So when you look across our strategy team, which is nine people, four men, five women now, uh, I love the balance there. Uh, it's great. We have, uh, we have a great amount of banter, as you know, because you've been around it, but we have tremendously successful top people in spe specific fields. And again, five of those nine are swimmers, swim at collegiate level or higher. Uh, obviously, Lindsay Mintenko being the gold medalist of the group. And you have people like Mike Hunger, who swam at college and coached for years. Joel Shinnefield, our now our managing director for sport development, who was executive director of the Coaches Association, but was a long time USA club coach, an NC2A coach, swam and played water polo. You're bringing Shana Ferguson, who has served our country with distinction in the Marine Corps, but swam at the Naval Academy and worked for Under Armour. And she brings tremendous skill sets. Uh, got to inherit Lucinda McRoberts, our chief administrative officer now. She was promoted in addition to being our general counsel who has spearheaded the change in, in our, our focus on keeping athletes first and our focus on our safe sport uh, success and development over the recent years. Uh, and then Eric Skefka has come in as our chief uh, financial officer from professional sports organizations and has just been tremendously transparent with how he's changed our budgeting and our resources. And I think if you ask any of the LLC general chairs, hopefully, or committee chairs that have inter in, uh, interacted with Eric, you know, we're not hiding our, our, our P&L. This is who we are, this is what we do. And uh, obviously, Belle McLemore, our managing director of communications, who not only has Olympics experience with the Canadian group, uh, but was vice president at UFC. So she knows how to fight, which is really great. And then and last but not least, our executive uh, assistant, Paula Diamica, who's, who's the glue that keeps us all together. So it's, it's a great group of people. I'm blessed to work with them side by side, but they are all motivated to do everything they can for this organization. It's uh, our relationship at, at Swim Swam with USA Swimming was um, I, 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 I spotty. I, I don't know how I would describe it. Maybe, maybe you could maybe you could describe maybe things that you heard, but it, it typically came down to me and it came down to our, our editor in chief, and he had one complaint, and the complaint was always professionalism. He said there's a level of professionalism that's just not there, and uh, that's not a problem. That's not been a problem since you came on board. He's like, no, I'm. He said, I'm. I'm. A, I'm a Tim fan. I. I. Uh, this. This guy's. He goes. If there's anything that I can sense that's changed, he has changed that. And um, he doesn't compliment anyone. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't happen. He's. Uh, he's. He's pretty tough. He's pretty critical. But uh, you know, he's, that's. Uh, that's his job. The. Uh, if. If I told you back in 2017, if I'd go back in time and I, and I whispered in your ear as this man from the future, Mel Stewart, and said, hey, Tim, you're going to step into this position. You're going to get it. Um, you're going to, you're going to, it's going to be youth organization. You're going to have to get your arms around the challenge of safe sport. And then you're going to have to tackle a pandemic. What, what would you have said to me? Well, I, I'm not sure I would have believed any man from the future, uh, but so who knows? Well, I, I obviously I would have been thrilled to know that I, I, I get the job, right? That would have been great. Uh, no, I wouldn't have expected the other two things, right? And I think that, you know, sitting back here after three and a half years, and there's been quite a few other little bumps in the road along the way, but I think what we've learned, what I've learned personally from a leadership perspective has been invaluable. And I think hopefully uh, it's made our organization uh, more transparent, as I said previously, 
But for me, it's made me a better person. It's made me a better leader because we are, we are acknowledging where we've made mistakes. We're, we're, we're not perfect. We're not going to be perfect. We acknowledge that we can lean into tough uh, circumstances, right? And lead the way and want to, and authentically want to lead the way to be better in everything we do. And um, I think that's a good place to be. And I think that I always tell my staff, you know, and people around me that, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you know, never waste a good crisis. This is our chance to lean in more than we ever have. It's a chance for us to really have a spotlight on maybe what isn't great. And this is a chance for us to dig into that. And I think that our organization, along with the help from a lot of really key volunteers and people that have served this organization, have been very honest with us about where we can be better. Uh, we have, there's a lot of that, which is good. I love the feedback and engagement. They're not afraid to tell us what to do better. And there's been a lot of like willingness to accept where our new governance is taking us. And I think modernizing this organization for the future is, is my job. And, I, and I'll be honest, Mel, I don't, you know, the last two gentlemen were phenomenal at what they did for USA Swimming and they're legends in our sport and they're recognized forever in our, in our building and headquarters. I won't be here for 20 years like they were. I don't think this job, I don't think that's healthy. And I think that part of succession planning, bringing in new ideas is to understand generationally what's important to this generation. And we're, we're in a new place, new time. And when you talked about digital transformation, modernizing, professionalizing, we owe that to our membership. We owe that to our athletes. We owe that to everybody that's part of the organization. And I'm, I'm really excited about the projects that we have in front of us. I will say this, um, just, it, I, I feel like I need to, as a as commentary, the, um, a lot of a lot of my peers, uh, they they really liked your predecessor Chuck Wilgus, um, but a lot of the, a lot of them were very angry. They felt like he, he he was he did not move quickly enough on safe sport, and I think that's a fair criticism. Um, I I personally felt the same way, but uh, I came to know him and, and like him. And here's here's a reveal that a lot of people don't know. I think I've told you uh, when I was thinking about swim swam, it was there were three or four pieces about launching and movers that got us there one of them was chuck and when one and and there were times when chuck was very angry with, angry with me but then you know and would email and copy the board members three days later he might email me and say i think you need to do x y and z because that's the kind of guy he was you were younger um it, it's my my experience with you is that you understood the challenges ahead and you you you're you were quicker on the upstart in terms of seeing things in a, in, in, a, in a world where we're in a digital age, where everything moves at light speed. And that is a very big difference. Of course, you have that's this long resume. So before we get too deep into this, I got to ask some questions that our folks are going to want to, our readers are going to want to know about, our listeners are going to want to hear. Everyone, if, if they're not aware, they should be aware that with the challenge of the pandemic, uh, you stepped in, you made a, you made a, you know, the CEO decision we're going to open up the foundation reserves and support our clubs. How hard of a de decision was that? And, uh, and how has it gone? Uh, was not a hard decision at all. Uh, uh, to be really honest, it wasn't a hard decision. Uh, I think I'm just grateful that uh, Dr. Cecil Gordon, our board chair of the foundation and the board, and that, and that's an all new board, by the way, as well. So much like the changes we've had governance of swimming, we have a dynamic, uh, very cool, uh, very aquatic, chlorinated uh, board of directors now at the foundation. And when we talked about the opportunity, everyone knows uh, over the 10 years plus the foundations and you're, you're heavily involved, you know, sa saving lives and building champions, everyone can get behind those ideas, right? But there clearly was something we, we've been missing in the middle. That's really probably the support of our own member club. So again, never waste a good crisis. We went to the board direct uh, to Dr. Gordon. He liked the idea. We went to the board directors, unanimous vote. Let's put together a grant program to help our own clubs. That was the right thing to do. And, you know, $3 million went out the door, which was the right thing to do. But I also want to make sure I recognize our, our, our LSCs because 59 LSCs, we challenge them to help their own as well, because of, of course they're helping us administrate all of our clubs in their different markets. And they went into their pockets and found another $6 million to help out our clubs. So as an NGB, I couldn't be more proud of everyone coming together and putting $9 million back in our clubs. Uh, it didn't save all of them, unfortunately, but I think it's made a good difference. And super proud of that, super proud of that coming together. You're managing reopening the sport. You're already in the process of it and doing it safely. Um, the, the first pro swim, the first tier pro swim series stop in, in San Antonio looked to be a great success. Uh, 
what is top of mind in terms of safety and managing uh, the, the pro swim series and events as we, as we move toward trials? Uh, in everything that we're doing right now, so from tier pro to offering advice to LSCs when it comes to local meets and local opportunities, is health and safety, full stop, right? So listening to your local health uh, you know, officials and making sure you're doing it right by where your market, because again, we're in 50 states, there's, there's different uh, requirements when it comes to health and safety with COVID. So keeping that top of mind is first and foremost. This will be our third visit to San Antonio this March because we went there back at the US Open November. So we're working with a market and local officials that know how to do this. We get better every time, volunteers, of course. And we have found a way to work with these organizations to ensure that what here's the protocol pre, here's what happens when we land, here's the testing, here's where people go, here's where they stay, here's how the athletes will eat, here's their access to water. And everyone is on board. Everyone is doing the right thing. And I think that as a thematic to our country right now, I think we've all learned, quite frankly, that if you're intentional about what you're doing and you follow the rules, we all do better. And, I, and I'm so happy and proud of our national team staff, our team doctors, uh, Lindsay and Keenan, and that entire group of our high performance, Mike Unger, everyone on the event side, everyone is bought in that athletes are first, but also coaches and officials. They've all jumped on board as well. Let's do the right thing to get people back in the water and race. And I think it was, I, I didn't go because I didn't want to, you know, mix it this first one. I'll go to the next one. And I'm going to go through the same protocols because I want to know what that's like. Uh, but the team's done a wonderful job. And it was great to watch on TV and watch people like Kathleen Baker uh, or Madison Cox or anyone get on Ryan Murphy and say, thank you to USA Swimming. We're back racing. And I think that means a lot to us because that's why we're all here, period. The big tenfold event the big moment for USA swimming is Olympic trials. It is, uh, it has been since, since trials were moved to Omaha in 2008. And it is a moment of celebration. Everybody walks around with their heads tall. Uh, looks like a Herculean task going forward. We're doing it wave one, wave two. Can you explain the, the, the idea behind wave one and wave two and what you hope to accomplish? No question. You know, one of our missions is to be a world-class event marketing company and, and they have been right. I mean, credit to Chuck, for his vision and of course Mike Unger for his exceptional execution of this event. You know, he has, he, this is his baby and, and he's done a wonderful job with tremendous teammates with Dean Eckern and now Shane Ferguson. So we have everyone on top of this. This is a halt hands on deck event for USA Swimming. And it's fun because we have everyone in the organization gets to participate at some level. So that's great. The, the bottom line for me in this and the, and the credit I'm going to give to Mike and, and national team and Lindsay and everybody that's done this is I'm so proud because we're going to keep our promise, right? They've been working on this since the moment we asked for Tokyo postponement last March as an organization, first in the world to do that with our athlete and coach to support. The next day was like, okay, how are we going to put on the trials next year? No, not knowing what's going to happen, right? Not knowing where we are, thinking we'd be way better, but we're not yet, right? I think, I think we all see the light at the end of the tunnel, which is great, but we're not there yet. So how do we do it? And I think we've seen other sports organizations around the globe. We've seen domestic professional sports organizations put on safe events have good protocols to do that. Therefore, if we're a best in class NGB, we can do it. So let's do it. So I really applaud everyone, you know, becoming laser focused on, we, we owe this to our athletes, let's get it done. So the thinking was, gosh, from a safety perspective, in Omaha, I, I gotta thank Omaha and, and their organization there for having uh, the, you know, the wherewithal to go through this process with us and wanting to do it safely. But I think we're keeping our promise. We're gonna have an elite event, same day, same time, wave two, uh, you know, two hours a night with our partners in BC, it's going to be the spectacle it's always been at USA. So, I mean, I haven't been, so I can't wait to go for the first time. But then at the same time, knowing that we had a test event the week before, the pool was already built, can we build an, a wave one where that 11, 12, 13-year-old for the first time still gets to come and experience the magic of that spectacle, that stadium, the lights, the show, the pressure, right? And then not only do that, that, that the finals of that event, the top two get to go to the next event, almost like a wild card playoff, if you will. I think this is going to be great. And I think that I'm really proud of everybody. It's not perfect. We're never perfect. But I'm so proud that we're going to be able to keep the promise from the elite athlete that wants to get ready for Tokyo to that youngster, that boy or girl for the first time that gets to be there. Because we know, Mel, that those individuals like Missy Franklin, who went the first time and didn't make finals, came back and won gold medals four years later. So it's important to who we are. Yeah, it's a um, we, we had an internal discussion about it on a podcast and, and there were there were some guesses going on. Uh, and, and there were debates as to as to in splitting it and how it should be done. And, and I think Braden mentioned that it should be split by gender. And I said, 
I was like, I don't think you can split by gender. That's just, that's not going to work. Which one gets the long, the, the, the longer trials and which one gets the shorter trials. It doesn't make sense. I also, uh, you know, uh, made a phone call to Jill Shenefield and said, just out of curiosity, what's, you know, wh what's going on in terms of the dates? Were those the only dates that really worked? And his answer was, yeah, it came down to managing the logistics of this. Um, when, when did you, when did you know, okay, I've, I've, we've got, we've got these dates for wave one and we've got these dates for wave two. Well, I think the good news is the dates were already there because there was always a, a Omaha test event, we'll call it, that had three, four to 500 athletes. So the pool was, were already going to be made. The stadium was going to be ready. So that, I think, you know, this was Mike and Dean's and Shana's brainchild. I, I think, I think they realized, well, wait a minute, we're already there. We've already got this. Can we do it? And so I think in Omaha, so yes, this is your facility. So when, when we talk about logistics and rent and the things that require us to go down there and invest in the pool bills with our partners, Mirtha, you know, it was there. So it became a very logical opportunity. And then it just got momentum and we built upon it. Uh, again, keeping health and safety first and foremost, but then still want to deliver you know, that special experience to anyone that participates. And again, and then from a safety capacity perspective, knowing that we were going to lose capacity, now we have a chance for parents and folks to come to the first one and they'll have a chance to do both maybe. So I, there's still a lot for us to work out, but I'm, 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 I'm incredibly confident it's going to be a, a phenomenal event. I know culturally just watching the the traffic on swim swam that when we have junior nationals or when we have even, you know, we, the, the a team could be away at world championships and there's still a U.S. nationals going on back in the United States. The audience shows up, everyone shows up and everyone is um, just as excited. But uh, the beauty of trials, of course, is the, is the greatest marketing tool invented by United States swimming, which is that, you make those cuts, your local paper, wherever you're from, writes that story. Jane Doe is going to trials. And, and, and I know that uh, I know that that that's important. And, I, and, it, and I'm also aware of, of that they're going to get the full experience of trials in wave one. Without question. And again, I haven't been, but absolutely. And you're right. I think the reality is that's what's great about our sport. Right. You know, we're, we're all we're excited about. You know, when I walk on a rec swim meet with my kids, it is packed full, enthusiastic. People are happy. There are smiles and there's racing and it's a good time. You go to a sectionals meet, right? That, I went to the sectionals meet in San Diego last February with uh, our board chair and our chair elect. What an unbelievable event. It was exciting. You could, it, was, it was fun. Kids are enjoying the racing. Uh, they're making cuts. They're making the decision to continue swimming. They're getting the opportunities to swim in college. That's the best part. It's all levels. And I think this is the culmination uh, of, of what our sport should be all about. We're winding down here. We've got, we've got a few minutes left, but it, the, you know, the, 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 you know, the hard question, the big question is um, what everybody has in the back of their head, which is how hard have we been hit by the pandemic? It's uh, how long is it going to take us to recover just in terms of the size of the swimming family and registration? You know, what's, uh, what's the hard truth? Uh, it's going to be a while, I think, quite frankly. I mean, and that's just, again, being honest. I mean, we've lost, you know, nearly 40% of our membership over this time. And, and, and I don't want people to feel sorry for the organization. I want people to feel sorry for those small businesses, right? Like any small business. And so our focus, like those grants, was to go out and help people you know, continue to run their businesses and be part of the sport. So that's our focus. I think that we, uh, I think this digital transformation that we're working on towards, uh, you know, state-of-the-art, a state of the art rather online coach education platforms, online registration, membership opportunities. You know, we're building things behind or under the hood, if you will, that are going to make us a better organization in the future that will allow us to scale back when the chance arrives, right? In the interim right now, it's about doing everything we can. I mean, the aquatics coalition that USA Swimming started, which is being led by Shana Ferguson, has been amazing. We've reached out to the other aquatic NGVs, we've reached out to the YMCAs, the Red Crosses, you name it. And, our, and the newest partner is the CDC. They've been so impressed by what we've done as an organization collectively in this coalition to safely return to training and competitions. We're out there making a difference now uh, as an NGB, as a nonprofit to open up states and open up pools. So we're out there doing the best we can where we can. That's where we're putting every dollar right now, which is in how do we keep our membership alive? How do we keep our clubs alive? And that's our focus. And I, again, it's been a great silver lining, Mel. I mean, I, I, I've had a longtime employee tell me that in the history of her experience at USA Swimming, she can't remember when every single person in the office was focused on our membership. And again, we're not perfect, but that's where we are. And I think it's been a great lesson and it's something that we're going to take forward uh, big time. 
you look into the Tim Henchy crystal ball and you're like, okay, I'm, I'm grinding now, but I'm looking into the crystal ball. I'm looking into the future and I'm, I'm, we're arriving at the same point in time on the run up to Paris. Uh, do you, can we handle an arena that's, you know, we're, we're at 14,900 in, in Omaha. Can, can, can we, can we, can we move to a new market and, and a bigger arena? Well, I think the markets have already gone public, so this will be no surprise. And I think Swim Swim is always on top of it and has uh, gone ahead and, record, and, and, and I think somehow put this out there somewhere. But, you know, we had an RFP go out for 2024, uh, to your question. Uh, we have four finalists, uh, one arena and three NFL stadiums. So I think, yeah, there could be a possibility to do more. Uh, why not? If the demand is there, the opportunity is there, uh, we're going to listen. At the same time, Omaha is what's put us on the map and they've been phenomenal partners for USA swimming. So they're in the mix as they should be. Uh, and I'm excited to see the first one, but yeah, we'll dream a little, we got to dare to dream. That's part of, that's part of who swimmers are. I got to say this just, just out of curiosity, cause I only got to read CEO corner once. If you guys are out there listening, go to usaswimming.org and read this. This is going to be coming out quarterly from Tim. Um, I was reading that, that, uh, you know, I was reading about the Ted Stevens Act and and being in compliance. Uh, it just it's you know is there, is there a challenge there? What's what 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 should we be thinking about? Yeah, you know Bob Benson, our chairman, has put together uh, in, and within the governance committee, which is a board related committee, uh, is now being led by uh, our vice chair, which is Chris Britton, our chairman elect, who will be the first ever independent chairman of USA Swimming, but chlorinated swim at Georgia for Jeff Bowerly. Uh, they put together a, a group and they're putting together a task force, three task force to help us ensure that we're compliant because the last thing we can do as an NGB is lose our status. That affects all of us, right? So we have to be mindful of that. So the good news is uh, Lucinda McRoberts uh, and our business affairs group have identified where we are out of compliance. We have a great working relationship with the USOP and their group, but Bob has put together this group with Chris. We've got Katie Miley on the athlete side, Bill Shaw's on the, on the coach's side, Jeanette Scow from an LSC and independent side, putting together three uh, working groups are gonna ensure we're compliant. The biggest part of this, which is a massive positive in my mind, is, it, is the fact that on all of our committees going forward, they, in, they now increase to 33 and a third percent athlete representation. And I think that's, that's exactly where we wanna be. And if we're an organization that's for and about athletes, then we need more athletes to engage ourselves. And we have, as you know, an incredible three board athletes in Natalie Coffin Hall, Maya Dorado Andrews, and now Katie Miley. We have an incredible AEC now uh, with some phenomenal people leading that and, and our, our current chair, Ellery, who swims at, at Rice and is, is a great uh, swimmer. We have great people that are engaged in this process with us and they're gonna help us get through this because the last thing we wanna do is be out of compliance so we can deliver on our promises to all of our athletes. So the only thing that I really wanna know is that it, is at trials, do, does, do you get in and swim? You're gonna have time to get in and swim each day, even if it's short? Oh, it's happening. I, I made, I, I twisted my, and said, you know, when do we get to swim? And so, yeah, we will be, might be 5.30 in the morning, like it is out here for masters, but we can do it, but we'll, we'll be swimming. So bring your fins. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.